Very good morning to you. On the show this morning, um, NCC boss Dan Bata says Africa can overcome poverty and others with AI. We also have a story, the challenges and reality of in vitro fertilization, that is IVF, to say goodbye uh, to uh, problems of fertility in families. Also, we'll have Off the Press, where we look at the headlines that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. Good morning once again and welcome to The Breakfast Show on Plus TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's a Wednesday frenzy. We do hope that you're having a wonderful time and happy holiday to all the people uh, that are staying home today. Some people do not even know that this is going to be a holiday because they must be at work like I am right now sitting and talking with you. But it's a pleasure knowing that you're somewhere there relaxing and enjoying yourself also gives us a lot of pleasure. So whatever you're doing, do it in a wholesome way so that um, tomorrow it will not be because you were on holidays you did something that you will regret for the rest of your life and whatever you're doing try to make sure that you're doing something to contribute to building our nation that is what we will uh, we'll be reminding you all the time as we always do our country is our country and we are collectively uh, responsible for how it turns out to be so Today on the show, like I have said, we're going to talk about uh, how we can look at uh, AI and use it to our advantage and become uh, richer than we are in the African continent or on the African continent, and also uh, how we can use IVF to make sure we say bye-bye to infertility in our homes. Marriages break up, a lot of things happen because of this, so we'll be discussing with someone today who will give us insight into what this really is and how it works and how we can take advantage of it and have what we need to have, that is children, which are blessings from God. Okay, we'll go right away to our first topic for today. ASU has clarified that 35% increment in award is an award, not negotiated salary increment. Remember that it was uh, on the social media and everywhere that the government is increasing salaries of the academic staff union of universities. So the academic staff union of universities has said that the much publicized recent salary increment is an award from the federal government, not a negotiated uh, increment between the union and the government. This was in a statement released on Monday and signed by ASU President Emeka Emanuel Osadoke. The union clarified details about the increment circulating online. Now, remember that the reports uh, surfaced earlier that President Tinubu approved the implementation of 35% and 23% of salary increments for staff of all federal tertiary institutions. He clarified that this was the award by the federal government during renegotiation with the NIMI BRICS committee. And according to him, the uh, offer was rejected by the union because it came outside the rubrics of the collective bargaining process of true negotiations. He also revealed that in their last meeting with the Minister of Education on the 3rd of September 2023, the federal government promised to implement the award in, interim, in the interim, pending the conclusion of the federal government ASU 2009 renegotiation agreement. And then finally, he promised to struggle for, the, for an appropriate uh, salary scale for all members through collective bargaining principle. So um, a lot of people were also just asking uh, if we want to make our country better, we want to, the hardship to end, is it by increasing the salaries of lecturers by 35%? And now, uh, the Manuel Osodeke, the president of ASU, is saying that that is not even what they were talking about. It's something else. So we will get that clarification um, as uh, the news unfolds. Uh, so be sure to be reading your newspapers and listening to news all the time. You'll get uh, what it is. And uh, right now we do know that the TUC and the NLC are still spoiling for a fight. In fact, on the 3rd of October, right after the, the Independence Day celebration, there's going to be the murder of all strikes, even though we've heard that there's going to be a meeting between the federal government and the organized labor. But uh, another one, another news that is trending that, we, that seems to gladden the 
hearts of a lot of Nigerians is that the Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunjiojo, has promised that the federal government would invest in the harmonization of the country's data through National Identity Management Commission, uh, noting that the era of multiple ID registrations would soon be over in the country. About time. He spoke while receiving the MTN management team led by the CEO, Carl Toriola, in Abuja on Monday, and a statement by his media advisor, Babatunde Alao, said that NIMSI had been mandated to harmonize the country's database. Tundi Ojo said there was a need for the country to have a tech-driven data hub under the ministry, and he noted that the president, Bola Tinobu, was willing to enhance the country's identity and security architecture. The statement partly read, uh, and I quote, we must have an interior hub, a massive data center where we will have our, all our identity information documented, end of quote. He explained that data harmonization would drastically cut down on stress for the people as well as overhead cost on the part of the government. Now, we were wondering all this while why it had to be that data would be collected from every point. You go, you have your national identity card, you still need your BVN, you need uh, everywhere you go to, you're required to get um, a, an identification fresh and apart from the ones that you already have. And now, everybody was crying out, it is too much. It's just like multiple taxation. You go here, you are required to bring everything from the scratch. You go another place, you are required to bring everything from the scratch and all that. So why can't we just have a, a number of people that are living in Nigeria, know everything about them that we need to know, and have just one place we can go to and make sure that we identify these people. So the present administration is going to invest, and I might add, even if they didn't add it, heavily on harmonization of uh, our identity. But no matter what it is, it's going to be worth it, as I think, and I hope that it is going to be. During the time of um, uh, president Obasanjo, former President Obasanjo, we know that we had uh, the uh, national uh, identity uh, card that was rolled out, national identification that was rolled out, and people registered and all that. But now Tunjo Jo is noting that having a BVN number, a voter's card number, an NIN and a passport number at once was needless. And that's what the citizens have been saying. He also expressed a desire to see the harmonization of information regarding issuance of driving licenses and passports, bank verification numbers, national identity numbers, subscribers' identity modules, and others into digital chips for planning and execution of government programs for accelerated development. He claimed that if uh, NIMSI performs well, then NIS would also perform better, and the police, NSCDC, and other agencies would perform above par. And like I said, it's about time, because Nigerians have been uh, really, really crying. But this other one, the mayor and 15 other officials have been arrested in Libya over deadly floods. That's a very interesting news, that if you go to X and see um, the comments that people made, you'll, you'll be... You'll just be laughing in some cases and just be shaking your head in other cases. And the mayor of Libya, in case you've not heard the story, the Libya's eastern city of Derna has been detained along with other officials on suspicion of mismanagement and negligence over the collapse of dams that flooded the city two weeks ago. Libya's attorney general's office said on Monday, September 25, the Attorney General's office, based in the capital Tripoli, said it had issued orders to detain eight local officials over the collapse of dams in a storm, which unleashed the torrent that swept neighborhoods into the sea, killing thousands. Now, the statement describes the mistake of the officials and their negligence in the matter of disaster prevention as having contributed to the catastrophe. Those detained included the mayor uh, and an official in charge of water resources, it said without identifying them. In a statement on Monday, the Attorney General's office accused the officials of numerous failings, such as mismanagement of funds meant to maintain the dams that burst and caused the floods in Derna. His office also said that the officials had shown neglect by failing to take precautions leading to flood-related deaths and economic losses for Libya. Remember that on Sunday, the Eastern government said that the number of confirmed deaths from the floods had increased to 3,868. The Attorney General's office said that investigations into other officials were ongoing and there could be more arrests. One of the questions that's popped off it was 
Common Libya, that was what people were describing. Common Libya uh, is able to hold their, um, their officials accountable for any disaster, which some people will say is a natural disaster. And yet, in Nigeria, when there was a plan to build a dam to, to cushion the effect of the flood water that will come from Cameroon when they opened their own dam, since 1982, people were asked to do that, people were commissioned to do that, monies were voted for that and all that. Nobody has been held accountable for that till date. Libya is doing it. Will we borrow a leaf from Libya or we will not? From other countries or we will not? Okay, you have debt traps on our roads that were given, contracts were given to people to, to do and they did a shoddy job, jobs that they wouldn't, wouldn't even finish a kilometer and the beginning of the road where they started from has already begun to collapse. Nobody's being held accountable. Bridges are failing. People are drowning in waters. Nobody's being held accountable. Now people are suffering out of, because of fuel subsidy removal. And the reason is that there were people who were actually sitting on the money, sharing the money, and making Nigerians to pay for it. Now it has been removed. The people who were responsible for this scam are still not prosecuted. We've seen a lot of things in Nigeria. When will Nigeria sit up and begin to hold their leaders accountable? Now, everybody will say uh, the people should be talking to government and all that. But if the person at the head is not deliberate enough and not, is not having the political will to do the needful, it will be very difficult for you and I, for the common man who is not at the corridors of power, to do anything except you organize a protest, which is almost unlawful in Nigeria, except you become a part of bodies like SERAP, uh, which a lot of people feel that they are only, all, always in court and all that. And by the way, SERAP has won a lot of cases against the federal government, but they do not say that much. What we always hear is when they're taking the government or any other body to court. When they win these cases, they don't publicize it at, as much as they should, and I think they should start doing that. Or you're part of the NLC, NLC, TUC, a lot of people are just saying they're errand boys nowadays because they have lost hope. They are fighting within themselves and they will go today on strike that the promise would be uh, one month until they are indefinite strike until their demands are met. And tomorrow they'll just sit at the round table with government and the call of the strike. We don't see any uh, much changes. So people are losing confidence. People are are being intimidated sometimes when they want to talk out and all that. But we have to be deliberate and make sure that um, the generations yet unborn will have something, some kind of lease of life in Nigeria because of what we did uh, today. Well, we do hope that it's going to be a very, very interesting program for you and for us, and especially when we're talking about infertility later on on the show. That will be our second hot topic and everything that we need to say on this program today. Remember that whatever we say here continues, the discussion continues on our social media platforms, and we do hope that you'll be engaging it if you've never done that before at Plus TV Africa across all social media platforms. Once again, good morning and welcome to this program. And we do hope that you will have a wonderful day. Let's take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the headlines. Stay with us.